Rub up your engines! Well, Toyota says it would rather buy credits than waste money on building electric vehicles. They're saying that, well, if they're going to have this deal that, oh, you're going to have to buy anti-pollution credits instead of building cars, Toyota is saying, hey, we'd rather do that than waste billions and billions on electric cars that nobody wants to buy. Toyota's CEO says he believes that 30% of the cars on the road by 2030 will be electric, only 30, right? I doubt out if it'll even reach that level, but they're saying we're not going to ramp up production of electric vehicles if nobody's buying them. Look at Ford, look at GM, nobody's buying that stuff, right? Look at Tesla. For a while during the pandemic, weird things were going on. You had to pay more for a used Tesla than a new one because the new ones weren't available, yada, 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 right? Now reality has come to the forefront. The rubber has hit the road. The resale value of these Teslas is almost nothing, and other electric car manufacturers are exactly the same. I have seen one-year-old electric Volvos, $67,000 cars. People are trying to sell them for $25,000, and they're having a hard time selling them because people don't want them. So I personally think that Toyota CEO is being conservative, saying that, oh, 30% of the cars by 2030 will be electric. I doubt if it'll even be close to that. Once people get in these things and see what they're like, see what a headache they are, see how much money it costs to fix them, see how their insurance rates go up, see so you have to buy more expensive tires more often because they wear them out faster. They're going to start thinking twice about buying another electric car. Here's a hilarious one. Four Ford Motor Company is telling its dealerships that they have idiots working there that shouldn't be working on their cars and they need retraining. Check this out. Ford Motor Company says 54% of the technicians at Ford dealerships must complete training by April 1st or they will reject warranty claims. Because understand this, independently owned is 99% of all the dealerships in the United States. So Ford doesn't own the dealerships. The dealerships are privately run. The people working as a mechanic at a Ford dealership does not work for Ford Motor Company. It's not like the guy in the assembly line who's building the Fords. He works for Ford Motor Company or she, whoever. They work for Ford Motor Company, right? But at the dealership, no. You work for, you know, Joe Pesci Ford. <laughs> Whoever owns a Ford, you're working for them. You're not working for Ford Motor Company. And Ford's saying, you got a bunch of crappy mechanics that are so bad that 54% of them better do this retraining. And if they don't, we are just going to reject the warranty claims. Because Ford claims that 54% of the warranty claims are wrong. That, that isn't the problem with the vehicle. And the mechanics don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> Here's the problem. They're making cars more and more complex, right? And believe me, they are more and more complex. I could get out my fancy scan tools and probably bore you to tears. I could talk hours about the complexity of the electronics, how in order to figure out what's wrong, you need to freeze frame oscilloscope and analyze the waveforms and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's getting complex, right? But at the same time, they're paying the mechanics less and less because the dealerships are greedy. They want all the profits for themselves and they don't want their workers to make much money. So you've got a deadly storm of really complicated cars and people that aren't that smart because smart people will not work for that low of a wage, right? And now Ford Motor Company's down the dealerships, 54% of your mechanics don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I've been saying this for years, right? Now even Ford admits it. Hey, I am laughing my hiney off here. You can't let greed take over, right? The mechanics aren't stupid. They see a bill and if they see the bill for the customer is $1,800, and then they see they're being paid $80 to fix it. They're kind of like, ah, oh, gee, you know, if they're smart and good mechanics, they'd stay away and learn something, but then they'll start their own business. Well, they'll be able to make all the money, right? This is the third worst thing about it is the good mechanics that they do have will leave to make more money on their own, and the people that stay are the people that, ah, oh, what the heck, you know, it's a job, <laughs> and they don't know what they're doing. Because <laughs> if they did, they'd get the heck out of the dealership and go someplace where they made better money. Well, Americans certainly think bigger is better. Check out the size of their pickup trucks. Here's a picture of a Chevy truck on the one side, a Ford truck on the other, and the tiny Toyota Tacoma in the middle. And really, if you get in a Toyota Tacoma, they are not that small. My son has two of them. They are not that small, right? But Americans have supersized not only their meals, not only their bodies, 
but they're vehicles too. That's what made me laugh when Mary Byer, the CEO of GM, said, oh, by 2030, if our car's going to be a little electric cars, people are driving. No, they aren't. You're selling a bunch of big pickup trucks, giant SUVs, and that's where they're making all their profit. And if you think all of a sudden at 2030, Americans are going to do an about face and start buying small little vehicles, I don't think so. Americans have always wanted big vehicles, only now they've gone insanely big. If you notice, some of the cars are smaller, right? But people are buying less and less cars and more SUVs and trucks that are bigger. If they think people are going to electrify and get smaller vehicles, you got another thing coming. Americans like giant vehicles. Everything's bigger in the United States, period. The people, the cars, the meals. Just about everything. All right, a guy did a study and found out people are idling their cars a lot more than they ever did. Waiting to pick up kids at school. You know, sitting, waiting for trains. Just, it's hot outside there. Right? Well, it's not good for lots of reasons. And I'll give you both the mechanic and the cultural reasons. One, you got a lot of wear and tear on your engine just sitting there idling. Cars were not made to sit and idle. Now, a diesel engine, much more can do that. That's why you see the big trucks idling. So if you got a diesel, it, it isn't as bad, right? But it will wear your engine out faster just sitting there idling. For example, I've had people that bought old cop cars and they might only have 75,000 miles. But if they did have a counter, an hour meter, you might see that those things have sat idling for 40,000 hours and that's a lot of wear in the engine. Now number two, you're going to use a lot of fuel if you have a gasoline car. It'll burn fuel sitting there. The diesels on the other hand don't. They don't burn that much fuel just idling. So if you got a diesel, it's not that big of a deal, but a gasoline car, yeah, you'll be using up fuel unnecessarily. And you will also get up more carbon buildup inside your engine. Realize when you're just idling, the carbon can build up. That's why People always talked about the Italian tune-up, which just meant go on a highway, drive at 75 miles an hour for an hour, and it'll clean a lot of the carbon out. And it will. But you get a lot of carbon build up just idling. And it can also contaminate another you know, problem that Honda had with the oil dilution where gasoline was diluting the oil. And this is especially true if you have a GDI engine, the turbocharger, the GDI engines, the injectors can put out over a thousand PSI, more pressure, turbochargers, more pressure, and they will dilute the oil with gasoline that leaked by the piston rings because of all that extra pressure. Then of course there's the societal reasons. You pollute the air more, it's sitting there burning, and of course it's just waste. You're burning oil, sitting there wasting time. I mean, hey, turn the engine off, roll the windows down. Don't sit there idling your car with the AC or the heat on all the time. It's bad for the car and it's bad for you <laughs> and everyone else. Well, if you've been following old Elon Musk, he said that Tesla cars would rise in value, but of course the opposite has happened. In 2019, Elon Musk said, Our, my cars will raise in value. You'll make money with them when you're not driving them. You can rent them out to other people. And he even made the insane claim that say, my cars will be worth well over $100,000 as time goes on because you can fix them forever. They're electric, blah, 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 right? Well, of course, the exact opposite is coming true. Reality, they're worth practically nothing these days secondhand. And it's not just like it was 2019. He repeated the same claim in June 2023. Not all that long ago, right? The thing is, in the real world, almost all cars depreciate like mad. If you ever thought about renting your car out to make money, think again, baby. You got to buy special insurance for that because if you use your regular insurance, something goes wrong, your insurance company will drop you like a stone. They won't even pay it. They'll say, you bought an insurance for a private individual driving the car and you're renting it out to other people, right? They're not going to accept that. And there's even some cases where people rent their car out and the cars were involved in a fatal collision and they sued the person who owned the car too and got money out of it. So, you know, all this fantasy of him, he doesn't live in the real world anyways, all the money he has. He didn't live in the real world. What does he know about the real world? Oh, they'll be worth tons of money. You can make money with your car. Cars are money losers. They always have been money losers. Don't ever think that your car is going to make you money and be worth more as time goes on. Elon lives in a fantasy world. Most of us live in the real world where we know the truth. Cars depreciate in value. They don't go up in value. And if you ever do try to rent your car out for money, be ready for some real headaches and you might not even end up in court if something bad happens with the person you rented the car to. You don't want to get involved in that. Of course, he doesn't get involved in anything like that. It's just him making up stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.